one of the oldest heritage sites in Kathmandu, reduced to rubble. I took these photos an hour apart. There were hundreds of tourists and locals in these pagodas when they disintegrated. I was standing just here beside this temple when it collapsed before my eyes. The earth shook so violently that people around me started to fall to their knees. They couldn't maintain their balance. There was nowhere safe to take shelter. I ran into a nearby cafe where I crawled under a table and I stayed there for half an hour while aftershocks continued. By the time I came out, people were already trying to rescue people from underneath the rubble. I was very lucky, but others were not. I watched as locals raced to unearth survivors with their bare hands, but there was no hope for anyone buried under this. The effort was determined but doomed. We breathed in clouds of dust as bricks and stone were tossed aside one by one and aftershocks rumbled. Those who survived stayed in the square, the safest place to be despite the mayhem. At sites like this around Kathmandu, bodies are still being removed. At this hotel in Tamil, a popular tourist district, floors collapsed and then plunged into a large communal well below. I watched as another doomed rescue mission unfolded here, a handful of men dwarfed by the scale of their task. About 50 people died here. It's the start of the trekking season and thousands of foreigners were staying in places just like this around Kathmandu. Surprisingly, given the intensity of the quake, there are many buildings still intact. But it's ancient sites like these that have been raised and they give Nepal and the Nepalese their sense of identity. So people here have lost not just their lives, their livelihoods, they've lost their cultural heritage. Emergency vehicles are few and far between. Most of the clearing is still being done by hand, or not at all. Demolished buildings are lying in ruins, signs of life tumbling from gutted rooms and ripped walls. The quake struck without warning and constant aftershocks seem to leave people paralysed. The police and army seem paralysed too, not sure where to start or how to lead recovery efforts. It's been truly horrendous to feel and to see the kind of terror and that misery that then follows in a disaster like this. The whole city of Kathmandu is now just waiting for that sense of fear to settle, along with the dust. <laughs>